Mr. Johnson back again. How's everybody today? Uh, we've, uh, we are going to show a video to preview the Desmos activity that will be assigned for factoring, um, solving quadratics by factoring. So you'll, I'll kind of demo what it's looking at and uh, it'll be important to watch this through because I'll talk about the applications that are at the end of it and uh, some ways that you can, kind of how everything's set up so that you just have to plug in the numbers and know what to look for to help complete this activity. All right, so as we take a look, it's a total of nine slides, as you see here, and uh, says for this following slides, factor the given quadratic expression and place the factors in box two or whichever box is below, because I was able to insert some notes in. If it's correct, it's going to produce the exact same graph. Okay, we've done activities before where if we're factoring on Desmos, you have your original uh, trinomial, let's say, in standard form, and below you put the two parentheses in. And if it was correct, it would graph the same line. Uh, if you recall those activities from earlier in the year. Then we're going to list the zeros because that's really the new thing now is we're going to click on where they cross the x-axis and uh, put them in as an ordered pair. Uh, use your notebook as you need to help factor, especially because there may be some that require guess and check. And uh, the challenge is, is can you really factor this down? So as we take a look here, I've got an example slide for the second one. So you're going to be given a, a some kind of polynomial or trinomial. And uh, you don't have to put equals zero on these. I tried to do that. It kind of messed up the graph. So just leave them like this. We know that it equals zero when we look to the x-axis uh, because the y value is zero. So if we were to use an equation where equals y or equals zero, we just look right to the x-axis. All right, so you're going to see this. You're going to be given the directions. Enter the factors below in parentheses, and you'll see these here. Um, except you're, you're going to maybe have X, just X's in them, and you'll have to fill in the signs and the numbers. Remember here, it's two numbers that multiply to four and add to five, which is four and one. So in any order, you can put the plus one plus four in. And uh, notice if I change this color here, if it lets me, um, if you notice, it's the same graph. And if I turn this off, the red line, red one comes back on, which is the original one. So I'm showing that these two things are equivalent and that I factored it. It then says to enter a zero or an x-intercept here in x comma zero form. So uh, the first zero is, and it could be either one, negative one and zero. So I just copy this point right over here. And then if there's another zero to it, we go ahead and enter it below this uh, one. And you can see the green dot there is negative four and zero. So those are the two solutions. If we were to solve this equation up here equal to zero, we would factor it as x plus 4, x plus 1 equals 0. And then we would say x equals the opposite of 4 and the opposite of 1. So x equals negative 1 or negative 4. As you work through, then you're just, all you're going to have to do is to factor these. So notice here, you have two different graphs. And that's because, and I'll change this here to a different color. Two different graphs right now. Uh, right now, this x and x here is just essentially x squared. So the one that you're trying to match is the red one here. So you've got to modify and you've got to add signs to these X's and a number. Remember, you ask yourself what multiplies to negative 22 and uh, adds to positive nine. So once you find those two numbers and the signs, you put them in there. And when the graph matches, you proceed on. And then you basically, uh, I, I filled in the templates for these, for the zeros. And all you have to do is click here and enter the X value. So if you're like, oh, I think there's an X at two, just put in two here. And as long as it graphs it on the parabola at the Y or at the X axis, you know you're good to go. Um, and when I check these over, I'll be looking to see that you filled in these three parts here, that you've completed the factoring and that you've put in the zeros. So you've got a couple examples to practice that. Slides three and four look like that, and even number five. So this one would probably be your guess check one. So have your notebook. And you might have to put numbers in front of X's. So maybe you get like 4X plus 3 or something. Um, you might have to modify this parenthesis a little to put the number in front of X and then add that on. Again, this one here is only um, X squared as, at this point. So it has to be manipulated so that you can match the graphs. Let's see. So yeah, pretty much the same slides for those few examples there. And then as we get to slide six, we get into an object launch application, which is kind of like what you saw in Khan Academy. But now when we're solving, we just focus on how long the object is in the air. So I've modified it so that uh, and adjusted the variables so that it's consistent to our standard form. A, the negative 16 is used just as a 
constant of gravity in feet. Uh, in feet. Um, y is our height of an object at a given time. And then B is our initial velocity in feet per second. C is the object, the height that the object is launched from. So if, you're, if it's C is launched from the ground, your C value is zero. If you're jumping off a platform, your C is whatever, however tall the platform is. X is always time in seconds. When given an equation with an object launch, the initial velocity will be a multiple of 16. So that's the activity, that's what we're gonna do for this activity to, to make it factorable. You're gonna factor out a GCF that is as or that is negative, as close to negative 16 as possible. So you might take out negative two, negative four, negative eight, or negative 16, depending on what the numbers are. Set each factor equal to zero and use the zero product property to solve. Um, the answer will be a zero that the answer will be a zero that is positive. So one of your of your solutions, you want the positive solution and you can use your graph to verify. Okay, so I put some pretty cool pictures on here. So you can see a rocket launches from the ground with an initial velocity of 128 feet per second. Um, I just plugged these in to show from that slide I explained to see how you get the 128 here, uh, since that's our B value in feet per second. And all you have to do then is factor this. So I've taken everything out um, and I've actually shown you, I guess, this is a, a demo example. So you're actually seeing um, what's expected here. So in this box, this is exact and multiplies to that. So again, if I turn off the green line, the black line is the exact same line. When I turn on the green, it maps right over the black one, which is my given and original uh, expression here. So I factored it down by taking out a negative 16, and I could also take an X out because X was in both terms. Um, so then as we move down, Find the positive zero and fill it in below. So we do that by clicking right over, and I know it's kind of, I'm gonna move my screen a little bit. You can see right here at eight is where the line crosses the x-axis, and it's like the rocket goes up and the x-axis is like the ground. So it goes up, it hits the vertex, the max height, and then it comes falling down to the ground and eight seconds, it would hit the ground. Okay, and that's what we have right there. And this is just the, the picture that I've input and I had to manipulate to get it on point and on center. Okay, so the examples you'll have to do is somebody kicks a soccer ball up into the air. Again, a pretty sweet picture. Should have been a graphic designer, probably not, but no. Um, so you're given, here's your given expression. You've got to factor it down here. So you've got to basically take, um, oh, and I should probably fill an X in here. Let's do that. So put an X in there and then, uh, cause you might not have it match if that's not the case. So, and then you have X minus whatever 64X divided by negative 16X is right there. And then basically you'll just use the graph once you have that to finish off and figure out how many seconds is in the air. So just two small pieces. You just have to do one computation and then you just have to fill in the zero. And the answer here is how many seconds the ball would be in the air. Okay, and then the last one deals with a diver going jumping off a platform. Pretty close to an actual Olympic example. Uh, an Olympic example is 10, it's 10 meters, which turns out to be 33 feet, but 32 is a multiple of 16, so I thought that would be a little easier to use. And we're just gonna assume they have an initial velocity of 16 feet per second. So you see how this builds our, our expression right here. The 16 is the initial velocity. The 32 is the height of the platform, 32 feet above the ground, zero. Um, we factor it. So again, we're gonna probably just take out, we're gonna keep this as negative 16 because we can't take an X out of everything. You'll end up with a trinomial inside the parentheses and it'll be like what we were factoring earlier. You can cross out the negative 16 when you solve it. And if you take a look, you can see one, we want the positive zero solution. Uh, the answer would, there would be an answer of negative one, but X is time, and time can't be negative. So we'd want the positive zero. Once you've done this, it auto saves. So remember, you just have to exit out of it. I would sign into your with your Google account as you do this, just because if something happens, you can log back in and continue this with your Google account. Or if you sign in without continue, or if you continue without signing in, uh, it you would have to start the activity over if you needed to come back to something or fix something up. So I hope this goes well. I, I know we've used Desmos in our classroom. And I think it's important to continue to push and, and try to understand the applications of some of the math we are learning. So please reach out to me if you have questions. I hope this goes well. Take care of yourselves and we will see you soon.